name is John G. And I, once again, have a few book recommendations for you. The first book is called A Great and Terrible Beauty by Lilla Bray. Gemma Doyle is a young woman forced to confront the expectations for her gender during the Victorian age. After living a laid-back life in India, she now finds herself at Spence Academy in England. Now she is learning the skills to attract a husband suitable for her social station. Marriage and having children is the only future she is allowed. But things are considerably worse for Gemma. She is afflicted by visions of the future. She is frightened by this power. The first time she had a vision, she saw her mother take her own life. When she found her mother's body in Bombay, she knew her visions were true. Not only must she endure the torment of the finishing school, where her family abandoned her, but she must struggle to keep her powers bottled up, lest someone else gets hurt. Her classmates take her out one night for a school initiation. During the stunt, another vision overtakes her. It leads her to a nearby cave where she finds the diary of a previous Spence Academy student. First, she keeps the book a secret. But as she starts to make a close group of friends, she begins to open up about it. Together, the small group of girls learn about magic, other worlds, and the dark price for the freedom to decide one's own fate. This Gothic tale is the first in a trilogy of novels and is a great introduction to mystical fantasy stories. It is a historical fiction novel of young women struggling against society's expectations for their gender, but with monsters and magic. Libba Bray has written a very fun novel, and a great and terrible beauty is a compelling story that you will find most enjoyable. Another book I'd like to talk about is The We Free Men by Terry Pratchett. Tiffany Aking is a no-nonsense and insightful young lady. Most of her days are spent watching her brother and helping out on her family's farm. But what she really wants is to make cheese and be a witch. Which is fortunate because a witch is exactly what her home needs. Tiffany has observed strange occurrences, like the appearance of tiny blue men. They call themselves the We Free Men, and they like to fight, steal, and drink. They also need her help. The Fairy Queen and her realm of everlasting winter is beginning to intrude on Tiffany's homeland. Monsters begin showing up in the nearby creek. A headless horseman stalks the road at night, and worse yet, her little brother. The Fairy Queen and her realm of everlasting winter has begun to intrude on Tiffany's homeland. Monsters begin showing up in a nearby creek. A headless horseman stalks the road at night. And worse yet, her brother has gone missing, lost to fairyland by the promise of candy. Tiffany and the wee free men have to find their own path to fairyland in order to stop the queen. All they have to save the day is lots and lots of tiny swords and an iron frying pan for Tiffany. But most of all, they have her power of observation. Will they be able to save her brother, or will they all be stuck in fairyland and live in nightmares forever? The We Free Men is a great introduction to the Discworld book series. It is full of humor, suspense, and a unique type of magic, the ability to see things for how they are. I highly recommend The We Free Men by Terry Pratchett and its four sequels. They are perfect books for an easy summer afternoon. They call themselves the We Free... Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm just starting the whole thing over. He was lured, 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 has been lured 
has been blurry 